There are two French producers uh, called uh, Atmania Brothers, and um, I think they had uh, the idea of making a film about Yves Saint Laurent for a few years, and they were searching for a director, and uh, three years ago they um, came out of uh, my last film, um, which was released here under the title of House of House Pleasures. Pleasures. And they saw possible links between this kind of aesthetic and uh, Yves Saint Laurent, so they came to me and asked me if I was interested by, by the subject. It's true that um, the first reaction for me was a little... Uh, uh, I wasn't so sure because, as you said, the biopic is not my type of film. But very quickly I, I changed my mind. And, uh, um, my, my, the great luck is that there was nothing. You know, there was no script, no books. I was very free to do what I want. So my, my first work was to make uh, the film uh, as personal as possible. The first thing I, I, I was uh, thinking about is what is going to be my point of view. Um, problems sometimes in biopics is they don't have a point of view because it's only evidence, evidence, evidence. So I, I didn't want to show how um, Saint Laurent became Saint Laurent, but I was much more interested um, to show what it costs Saint Laurent to be Saint Laurent um, every day. So I, I decided to, to, to start with Saint Laurent already um, star already uh, famous and um, I can't treat his whole life it's it's too long and if you want to tr if you want to treat everything you don't treat nothing you know because uh, you, you go too fast so the, the 10 years I chose uh, 67 76 are for me the most um, uh, crazy the richest and I think you have everything um, within these 10 years. I am always very moved by uh, an, uh, a, a world that ends. So in House of Pleasures, it was the 19th century and the beginning of the 20s, which is a huge you know, um, um, revolution. And in Saint Laurent, it's uh, the end of the 70s and the beginning of the 80s, which is a revolution also. <clears throat> the first two uh, parts of the film are quite chronologic, and then I wanted that the third part, uh, at the moment uh, when Helmut arrives, uh, we, we, we um, approach him so much that we're almost in his head. And um, I wanted the idea of the time to explode, you know? Like if you, if you come into a room and there are mirrors everywhere, and each mirror you know, is a part of yourself, uh, the, the film at that moment uh, becomes quite mental, and much more effective than in the beginning. I, I, I wanted the film to have a kind of arc, so I used um, the, the, the time for that. When you start writing a scene or a film, it, I want to have in mind the sound of the film, not only you know, the images or the dialogues, but the sound. The sound is not only music, it's really the, uh, the whole sound. And I decided very uh, early to, for this film that it will be basically split into uh, two kinds of music. Um, soul music from the 70s and uh, opera. Uh, and also that all the music uh, would uh, come from inside the scenes. You know, not, not much score, but inside the scenes. Which I like on, on that. What I like on that is that the, uh, the spectator and the characters are on the same level uh, of emotion um, to the music. And then I realized uh, during the editing that uh, these two kind of music were not enough. And I, I added some music I composed, more electronic, um, in, you know, in uh, the way of these, these years, like 74, 75. So you know, it's like uh, it was really more uh, equilibrated.